<laughs> so, Marissa, before we get into it, what was your favorite subject at school? Uh oh. Um, I think foreign language, English. Oh, really? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Oh, okay. So yeah, what about yours? Sports, I bet. You know what? I'd like to say it depends. I have two answers depending on what you're asking. If mm. you're asking what my favorite was, yeah. it was PE. But uh, <laughs> what I was actually good at wasn't actually PE, it was actually math. I found math really? boring, but I was actually very good with numbers. That is why you used to work in Canada as a, as a banker? I, I as an insurance? I worked at a bank. I worked at a bank. But I, I didn't actually enjoy it. I was just good at it. Just because you're good at something doesn't mean you enjoy it. That's but true. perhaps you can actually be both. Because as you yes. mentioned before, yes. here in the studio with us, we have somebody who is very adorable, but more importantly, he's very smart. Yes. He's still very young, and he's a storyteller who loves and not only loves, but is very good at science. Yes. Rainer Stiawan and also his mother, Batania Sari. Good morning, guys. Good Thank morning. You for joining us. Good morning. Good morning, Rainer. Good morning, Rainer. Good morning, Paul. Good morning, Hi, Rainer. Paul. Oh, my, my, my. Thank you so much for coming to our studio, right? Yeah, thank you for inviting me and my mom to. Oh, it's, it's pleasure. our pleasure, indeed. So, I have my first question, Rainer. This is for you first, before to your mom. So, why do you love science and biology, and how long have you loved this subject? And do you remember the first time you decide, mm, this is the subject that I really, really love? I really like science and biology in particular because science is what the universe is built upon. So, mm. if we can understand science, when we understand this universe, yes. can you imagine a world with, without science and like biology? Mm. Um, probably COVID would be even more um, dangerous and we wouldn't even True. be here because we're on lockdown. Yeah. This is why science is uh, basically some power that we need and we have. Mm. And with the power of science and our brains, yes. um, we can help understand the universe. And I really like science uh, probably since I was two years old. Wow. Um, but like I wasn't into the hardcore stuff. I was just into watching the planets move around, mm -hmm. seeing the models, mm -hmm. listening to the nursery rhymes of planets, stuff like that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Wait, how um, old are you now, Rainer? Uh, 10 going to be 11. You're going soon. on 11. Actually, I would say you're 10 going on 40 in my <laughs> eyes, but by the way, yes. you're th the way of thinking. But yes. it's really great how you started so young because yep. I have little ones of my own. And mm -hmm. uh, it's, you know, it, it, there is a lot of introductory mm. to subjects when you're at a younger mm -hmm. age. For yes. example, you can watch educational things, on mm. whether on the internet or on TV, but that actually leads you to science. But it's interesting yeah. how mm -hmm. Rainer got himself introduced to science. Now, my question for Batania, what was it like uh, when Rainer was still really young mm. and how did you recognize that, oh, he really loves science, so this is what we need to kind of expose him to and how did you expose him to more on this subject that he was able to develop so fully at such a young age? Uh, yeah, so basically there's nothing really special about uh, me and Rainer's dad parenting style okay. but we do like both Rainer's dad and me love to read books as well and we tend to have lots of discussion as well at home. Right. But since the age of two or, or two or three, mm -hmm. uh, we see that Reina really uh, enjoys to hear a story mm -hmm. and also to give a chance for him to retell uh, what he had read or okay. something from his surrounding. And I still remember like the first time he got interested in biology is when he sees the blood that coming out from the cuts of his skin yeah. okay. right. or when he choked during eating mm -hmm. yeah, and he true. tend to us. <laughs> Lots so he of... wasn't scared, but in fact, he was more fascinated. Yeah, he keeps okay. asking lots of questions. Wow. Yeah. And I think, uh, yeah, I think like we, uh, the way we respond to the question itself matters and makes a difference. Like mm -hmm. we try our best not to say, let's say, if you don't know the answer, right. we try to avoid, I don't know, and then that's it. Okay. Mm. Yeah, so we try our best to Let's say if we don't know the answer yet, uh, let's find let's out find together. Out. Let's, let's out. read right. books together. Let's okay. watch documentaries together. Or we can ask our friends. 
Okay, that's yeah. interesting because mm -hmm. for one, the, the early signs was that he has great memory retention. The fact that you read something to him, mm -hmm. he was able to retain that and read it back to you. Mm -hmm. And then secondly, just his fascination of yeah. why things are the way they are. Yes. That's really cool. Curiosity. The science is behind most things in life. Absolutely. And the thing about children is that they're curious, right? And having a parent or parents who are able to, you know, accommodate and actually support this curiosity to mm -hmm. keep going is actually fantastic. Mm -hmm. And this has actually led your curiosity from the age of two yeah. and then uh, until now has resulted in one thing that you do, which is Scienclopedia. Yes. What is Scienclopedia? What are you trying to do with Scienclopedia? Scienclopedia is a science talk mm -hmm. um, where I like to explain my interests with um, guests that I invite. And other than doing podcasts, which is literally part of Sanclopodia's name, mm -hmm. I also do micro blogs um, with the help of my me, my brother, and my dad sometimes. Mm -hmm. um, nice. Educational videos and an Instagram live um, um, once in a while. Mm. Uh, so Sanclopodia started off uh, when I realized that I really love to tell stories, mm. and I really love science. Mm. So I want to share this science, mm. this understanding of the whole universe which we live in, mm. with other people. Mm. So I thought, why not? We should make a podcast about science, mm. which can tell everyone the story of the universe and many other stories. Mm. But the thing is, I, I've realized that um, you do not need a talent to start off something big. Mm. You just need passion mm. in something mm. and passion in storytelling. Mm. And right here I am um, just because of two things. Passion mm. in what I love, which is science, and mm. passion in storytelling. Mm. Like you don't need to, uh, uh, to follow my path. Like, uh, like you don't need to love science. You can do whatever you want. If you like sports, then you can mm -hmm. do uh, sports training online. If you like arts, mm. then you can do uh, drawing online, mm. storytelling, stuff like that. Just follow your talent. And right now, you'll probably be beyond what you can believe. I completely Amazing. agree with you. Me too. <laughs> I completely yeah. agree because, with you. Because <laughs> um, you were able to put the two things that you do well yep. together. Mm -hmm. how, how much preparation do you have to go through in order to like prepare for an episode? Let's say you want to talk about what particular topic. Yeah. You have to do a lot of research as well. How much, and then you have to prepare for creating the podcast. So how much time does it take for you to prepare mm -hmm. it? The, your par how big of a role do your parents play in? And how do you choose your guests? Mm -hmm. Who to interview? True. Uh, for who to choose our guests, mm. um, sometimes we like to uh, go on social media and find anybody mm -hmm. who might want to be interviewed. Like they might text us or we might text them. Mm. Um, sometimes my mom and dad's friends or even my friends mm. um, will, will be asked to if they can be interviewed, mm. like um, like one of my dad's friends. Mm. Like, what subject? What what particular? What subject have you have you discussed in Scienclopedia? Uh, a, a lot of things. Mm. Biology, okay. astronomy, my, my, my. Uh, volcanoes. Mm. Wow! Like I can't name them all. Like there's so much things that we've talked about, mm -hmm. and it's. Like, and it's a pleasure to just go back and listen to what I've talked about because yes. there's so much potential that I've realized. Mm. And it's just like me, one person. Like, <laughs> like probably everyone else in the world can do this. And I don't mean probably. Everyone in the world mm. has the big potential mm. to do what I'm doing now, probably mm. even greater than me. Mm. It's because we are all humans, and if I can do it, you can do it too. So just follow your dreams and combine passion with what? With storytelling, mm. and you will probably be greater. You will be greater than you can <laughs> ever imagine. You know, yeah. you can be a motivational speaker too, yeah. I think. You know what he... You remind me of the late Pak Habibi, Pak Beji Habibi. Oh yeah, I your saw fire. Your video. Exactly, your fire, your passion. I think he would have been so proud. The fact that Indonesia has someone like you, right? Definitely. <laughs>
Russia does not just have me. It I has know. probably millions of kids I that know. are beyond me. Like I'm probably just the <laughs> just one kid among the millions of kids which have bigger potential than me. So <laughs> Indonesia definitely does have a spark to the bright future. Absolutely. Wow. Absolutely. I, I'm I'm curious, Madania, right? Um Obviously, Rainer has a platform, a digital platform to Encyclopedia, and sometimes he would do his research, I'm sure, through yes. the YouTube videos that the internet has provided. Uh, but at the same time, I know for a fact that Rainer reads a lot of books. You seem to strike the balance correctly. What I mean is that, you know, it's like without avoiding techno using technology or gadgets, but also at the same time, raising a child that would read many, many books. So how, how did you do it? How did you balance it out? Um, yeah, so basically because, maybe because Rainer's dad and me also love to read books and I have see. a discuss. And, and, and I think mm. because every time that we read books together with the kids, mm. we usually uh, sparks them with uh, the kind of question with, how, why, and why not. Okay. How, why, and why not. Good. Yeah. Interesting. It, yeah, because it makes a difference. So, because reading books, it ignite their imagination, mm. their curiosity, mm. and then we try to dig them down again. Mm. Yeah, so that makes a difference. So I think uh, that creates the creative thinking skills as well. Yeah, mm. most definitely. Yeah. You, can, you can obviously yeah. see, the, see the result. Yeah. So, uh, Rainer, you mentioned earlier that Pretty much everything can be explained with science. Yeah. Now, a lot of things are still foreign to us, even as adults. So we would like your help <laughs> oh, in yes. explaining some of the things behind, some of the science behind some of the things that we see in our day-to-day -day lives. Marissa? Right. That is correct. So I have several questions, right, Rainer? This is going to be a little bit of a game. And you would have to explain it. I'm not very good with science. You know, I'm a language kind of person. You're a combo of the two. So would be great if you can answer this question. So why do the leaves of a tree in the Four Seasons country can turn red, yellow, or yellow during autumn? Like What's going on? colors normally around fall, right? Or yeah. autumn. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, what happened? Usually, leaves, leaves are green, like mm -hmm. we see in the plants around us. Mm. And when we go to a forest, we see green plants, green everything. Yeah. Right. But when, in, but since I've been to a four season country, yes. um, during the autumn, mm. um, the leaves tend to turn brown, yellow or red. Mm. And this is because chlorophyll. Chlorophyll is a molecule yes. that gives color. Uh, and chlorophyll is found in plants. Like yes. When you look at a leaf of a plant, it has chlorophyll inside it because right. it's green. Mm. And the, the way we see it as green is because it only bounces off green light back into our eyes and, right. and the other colours of light are uh, uh, absorbed never to come into our eyes. Right. But when it becomes colder and closer to the autumn, yeah. then there's less sunlight, meaning there's less chlorophyll because chlorophyll helps... Uh, Chlorophyll is a part of photosynthesis, yes. right? which means that the color that's um, red, yellow, uh, orange yes. will be re revealed, which is which has actually been always there. So that's how it works. Okay, you know what? I didn't I, realize. You, now that he's mentioned it about photosynthesis and yeah. chlorophyll, I actually learned this back, I think, in grade nine, so much uh, at a uh, much higher age. Yeah, but I've totally forgotten. If my daughter was to ask me why is the daughter why is the leaves uh, yeah. orange, I would I would I would have forgotten. Yes, it's amazing your memory retention as to the reasoning behind this. And but your explanation true. is so simple and clear mm -hmm. because mm -hmm. I'm sure I learned it at school back then, but it just went like like yeah. that with me. Yeah, I just I didn't retain <laughs> that information. In my exactly, head. it was probably Very a little good. bit too technical. Very good, Rainer. Okay, the next question is, whoop, ah. righty ho, uh -oh. why soap <laughs> kill? Viruses. So that's that's a bar of soap, is it? Yes, a okay. bar of soap. <laughs> happy and with you know like the boxing okay. gear. Why? Uh, soap kills a virus because, like you know, when you put uh, baking soda and vinegar together. Yes. What happened? Um, when there's like this reaction, like foam bursts out. Yes, that's like true. That. Yes. Uh, this is because um, baking soda is a base and vinegar is an acid. Mm. Okay. And when acids meet bases, 
then um, there's a reaction and they both get destroyed, leaving some residue. Right. right okay. And uh, virus shells. Virus shells are um, covering the d DNA or RNA. Mm. They're actually basic. They're, um, which can be destroyed. Mm. No, no, they're acidic. Mm. Which can be destroyed by a basic solution, right, or a basic material, right. And soap, soapy water is actually basic, which will destroy the amino acid shell mm. of the virus. Mm. So when an acid needs a base, mm. then you're causing that reaction. Yeah. So the virus gets destroyed in the process. That is why we wash our hands okay, a that, lot. I had no idea. <laughs> that right. Used to me. Okay. Something Amazing. every day. Exactly because. Uh, so until your explanation, my thinking was always like, okay, to get rid of virus, to get rid of dirt in our hands, just wash it with soap. Just to get rid of it. But to that's get it. it. Off your hands. Just to yeah. get get we didn't rid know of it. I was destroying the virus. No, well. amazing. Okay. Thank you for that explanation. And very relevant to uh, these days, of course. Absolutely, with, with the pandemic and everything, <laughs> right? Next. Ah. Yeah. What's that? Ukulele. Oh. Tell us about the Sounds science like behind ukulele. <laughs> so, are you gonna? Play a little bit or... There's science behind music. I didn't know that. Yeah. Yeah. There is science behind music. Um, let's say we pluck a string on the ukulele. I don't right. know if you can hear this properly. Like... Mm. When you hear it, it's like... Then it makes a sound. Mm. Reason. Mm. Like probably if we didn't have this tiny hole... Yeah. If we didn't have this hole, then, then you won't hear anything. Really? But why? Yes. Huh. But why do we even need this hole? It's because when we pluck a string... Mm. A string vibrates back and forth and back and forth. Right. Which will move the air around it. And yeah. when the air um, goes inside this, mm. then the sound, well, the mini sound that we can't really hear since like, since it's not too big, will get amplified. So oh. we could, so the sound gets bigger and it travels to our ears. Mm. But when we remove this, the air is still vibrating, but mm -hmm. it's not as strong as when we have this hole. Mm. And, and that's how a ukulele works. This is for amplifying, and this string is for making a sound. So, so wow. basically all stringed instruments, the reason they have that body is a chamber, and that hole is to capture the air that it's vibrating, yes. and it's making a sound through that. So this is for the air to come inside, and, ah. and this giant place is where the sound comes out. I always thought it was just so you could just put it on your lap. <laughs> but I, guess, I didn't know there was an actual perp for actually making the sound. So if you Amazing. actually just had strings on a bar, it's not going to make any sound at all. It will make some sound, but it will be very tiny oh. since there's no amplification. Right. It's oh. sort of like dampened. Yes. I guess. So you're just really, you're, you need like a little cave to yeah. capture that sound. <laughs> to make, make it. Make us be able to hear that it. That makes sense. You see, it's like oh. all these things, like you pay attention to the very little things in life and it is fascinating. Very That's important. what we need to actually do. That's why do. science is interesting. It <laughs> is super interesting. I totally agree with you. Yes. That's the, old, the Those are the questions that we have. Thank you. All right, I'm gonna put it back. Pretty, you make a pretty good host. <laughs> Thank you. Game show host. Thank you. So, um, you you read a lot of books, Rainer. Yeah. What would be uh, uh, some of the top recommendations for those that are interested in science? Perhaps books that you can read. Um, probably. You brought some with you. You can show. What is that? Yeah, you can show us what you what you have. This world is yeah. one of my uh, favorite books because mm. it explains philosophy in a like like it explains philosophy in but it, it in a story like it's kind of rare to get like like it's really good how this author explains philosophy mm. in an interesting story and mm. the myth and the reality is not what you expect and that's what philosophy is about you need to expect the unexpected and you need to like <laughs> just like you need to just surrender that you know nothing in this world. Okay. Yes. Because, because we, because we are just humans. We. Silent moment. This, <laughs> this book is really good for explaining philosophy. Yes. And philosophy is about sharpening your mind and yep. finding about this world around us. I really recommend this for anyone who likes a quick puzzle or a quick think around, like, okay. um, how do I know you exist? How do I know seeing 
see morning show even exist? Could this be an <laughs> yeah. illusion or something? Yes. Like yeah. So it's more in a story format, so it's easier probably to digest. It's actually, right? well, so I've heard of Sophie's World for okay. a while, but right. I've actually never opened the index and everything. Mm -hmm. And thanks to Rainer, he has introduced me or reintroduced me to Sophie's Ooh, World. Yeah. And I looked at the index. It's amazing. Okay. The philosophers that are being discussed, Aristotle, Socrates, oh. Plato, Kierkegaard, you know, it's like Hume, everything. And I'm like, <gasps> But it's I'm probably a bit simpler it. than having to... Well, it's, it's like a mix, right, Rainer? A mix of yeah. like a little bit of story, like fictional story, but at the same time weaving the, the, the thinking... It's an educational story. There yes. you go. Okay, perfect. They worded it better than us. Exactly. It's an educational story. <laughs> right. And what is what the else? next what one? What else have you got? Gangsta Granny. Okay. <laughs> this is... <laughs> Gangsta Granny. My brother really, really like this book because... Uh, this is a very warm fiction mm. okay. book. Has it like... A, like the story is really nice, mm. but the emotions and feelings are well brought to us. Like mm. how Ben's grandma died, ah. um, Ben the grandma um, pretended, or at least tried to pretend to be mm -hmm. to be a, a gangster, and then in the okay. end, um, the, Ben's granny was actually a gangster. But... Oh wow! Okay. So you like fictional stories as well? That's yes, cool. Like, I do believe that it's not too good. It's not good to read too much fiction books, and it's not good to read too much non-fiction books. Mm. Right. That's why I have. That's why I have like a mix on my bookshelf. It's a balance. Okay, that's another great tip because I tend to read non-fiction, but I'm going to start reading novels <laughs> as well. Thank you. Number three and four and five. Mm. Alice's Adventures in Wonderland, oh. A Little History of Science, and The Medicine Book. Wow, are you thinking of becoming a medical doctor there with a medicine book? <laughs> uh, I'm thinking to like, to like, to help people in biology and microbiology. Mm -hmm. like, like I had a choice between medicine book and biology book. Yeah. But like I, I wanted to bring both. But I think medicine book is more interesting since it talks about microbes way more. What is one interesting fact that you've learned from that book? Um, one that you remember is like, oh my god, this is so interesting. Um, one fact that I remember is that, uh, like, like we didn't understand mm. viruses, mm. and we just thought it was some like bad smell in the air, mm -hmm. like yes. a miasma or something. Mm -hmm. We thought it was evil in the air, mm. so they made like drawings of skeletons hanging onto people's backs, and then it, it turns out it wasn't even something as big as a skeleton. It was some tiny microbe mm. um, that was responsible for all of this. And then, like, just even a tiny bacteria caused cholera, and they thought it was some uh, bad smell, bad air, so we felt... Uh, so, like, the plague doctor, plague doctor felt, like, this crow mask with herbs inside of it to keep the bad smell out, and then it didn't really work that great. Mm. Wow. So, this, this is really interesting how we start off as... Uh, how we started off as not knowing mm. what what viruses were or bacteria were or diseases were. Yeah. Then we slowly learn that, oh, it's some tiny microbe. Mm. Oh, it's not because of some bad smell. It's because um, people drank contaminated water. Mm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Fascinating. Wow. Okay, so those are just five <laughs> of your top recommendations and very, I would say, nice variety. So there's very a little nice bit of variety. everything. So, yeah, guys, yeah, yeah. I hope you were able to mark that down. <laughs> but if you haven't, you can always follow uh, Rainer's recommendations as well as all of his stuff on, uh, if you're on Instagram, Cyclopedia hey. is, uh, is the tag. You just make sure you give that a follow as well as your YouTube channel is under the same name, correct? Yeah. Scientopedia. There you go, guys. Yeah. So make sure you give that a follow because I certainly have. Oh. Um, th this runs in the family. By the way, Rainer's not an only child. You mentioned your brother earlier on. Reiki. I think we have your brother with you. Hi, Reiki. Reiki. Come on, come on. Good in. morning. Come, come on. on. Wow, matching Hi. suits. Love it. Have a it's seat, your first Reiki. time on television, actually. Oh, really? <laughs> wow. Congratulations. <laughs> Glad to have you here. So, Reiki, do you also love science? Uh, yes, I do. Really? Okay, wait, how old are you then? How old? <laughs> eight. You're eight, so about two and a half years apart. Yes. Oh, right. amazing. So did you love science because of your brother, or is it because... Yes. Like, like when my brother loves science, like, like sometimes after a while, I like follow the steps and I also like it also. Mm. Oh my gosh, I see. two of them. So again. what's your... I, I know. <laughs> I know what you mean. Amazing. I know what you mean. 
So what kind of things do you two usually discuss when you're like in um, your playtime or whatever? We usually discuss about like random stuff, like maybe like... Uh, yeah. Like the classic brother stuff. Yeah. But we like to... Yeah. Uh, like sometimes we discuss about like... Space. Space and stuff. Mm -hmm. Black holes. Like, like black holes. Like if we... Yeah. Like like yeah. we also discuss about philosophy, like let's say there are two black holes. Yes. Did the larger one eat the smaller one or did the smaller one eat the larger one? What would happen? One? Yeah. yeah. And then, is... what, what do you both think? Um, Ricky thinks that the larger one eats the smaller one, because right. like, that's the common belief. Yeah. But, but I agree, but I kind of disagree at the same time. Like, mm. why, how do we know if the larger one feels with a bigger how do you know the larger one ate the smaller one? We don't know. When, we, when the smaller one could eat the exactly. larger one. Exactly. You just, you just blew my mind there, because that could very well happen. Do you guys ever argue about points? Like, do you guys ever have different opinions when it comes to science? Uh, sometimes. Yeah? Sometimes. That is an interesting discussion I would I love to be there for. By the way. <laughs> Two scientists. It's amazing. I have one question yes. for, for the mom, um, Badania. Um, I'm interested in, you know, it's like when did you when did you allow your children to begin to interact with gadgets? With gadgets. Yeah. Because yeah. mm -mm. that's an important part of it. Yeah, it is. It is important. Yeah. So basically, to be honest, it was uh, our experience that we only have iPads mm -hmm. when you were five, right? Mm, okay. Back then. Yeah. 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 It was when uh, Rainer was five years, years old. Mm -hmm. But before then, uh, be, be, before back then, we we only like read books, and because he really likes to hear a story as well. All right. Yes. Yeah. So that is uh, the kind of uh, usually things that we do at home. But not only uh, read books or. Uh, see something or observe things, usually yeah. we discuss again, what do you think? Mm -hmm. Or maybe if they ask uh, questions, sometimes we ask them back, mm -hmm. and what about you? What do you think? Right. Mm. Yeah, Let so them have their own way of thinking and expressing yes, their answer. Yeah, we mm -hmm. kind of love that. And then we, do you still remember when we do like a storytelling session at home no, with yeah. the tan and torchlight? Yeah, you usually do that. Oh, <laughs> like so we nice. use like the like the flashlight from the phone when we like to tell a story with puppets like the dog fights with a monster when the human like fights with dog, stuff like that. <laughs> yeah. like, so, and by the way, if you guys are my kids, you can have all yeah. the gadgets you want because I know you won't just use it. You'll use them for learning. That's what I know. Yes, it's amazing. But anyway, thank you so much, Reiki and Rainer. Oh, amazing pleasure to have you guys here. You guys can come back anytime because we've learned so much in our short time together and I'm sure we can learn so much more from you in the future. Exactly. Good luck. With Scienclopedia. Best of luck with everything. Yes. Do you want to say anything for your last words? Mm -hmm. Perhaps um, wishes? Just follow your dreams to those looking out there. Mm. Just find your passion. Mm. Find what you like and find your courage to do the storytelling. And you will probably speak out for the rest of the world. And it's not just me if I can do it. If I can do it, you can do it. <laughs> Everyone can do it. And because we are all humans and we will always want to follow our passions. So let's go change the world. Follow your dream, follow your passion, and change the world. <laughs> I feel like I gotta go out and change the world now. The world I'm now. so inspired. I am following my passion totally. Thank you guys so Thank much. Thank you so much. Dad is here as well, so we gotta say hi to Dad. Dad That's Opa. Well. Oh, Opa. That's Thank Opa. you so much. Yes. All right. Thank you.